Hello, it's Chef John from FoodWishes.com with the conclusion of the Found on Food Buzz 24-item tasting menu. As you well know by now, this is part of Food Buzz's 24 meals in 24 hours on 24 blogs worldwide, by the way. And uh, here we go. This is the end. This is item 17 through 24. Item 17 was a simple palate cleansing hearts of romaine. Simply dressed, an anchovy citronette, kind of tart, kind of crisp, uh, really simple, just to kind of clear the palate for the rest of these courses, which were beef. So number 18 was an amazing beef tenderloin. It was served on some sweated leeks, some melted leeks sometimes they're called, leeks slowly cooked in butter with just a touch of cream. And it was topped with a wild mushroom, chanterelle in this case, a wild mushroom reduction. So all you do is you take your wild mushrooms, a small dice, and you slowly cook them in butter on medium-low heat until they look like that. Then you add some veal stock, all right, about twice as much stock as you had mushrooms, and you slowly reduce it until it becomes kind of sticky and glazy, and you put that over the top of that seared beef tenderloin, unreal, that was so good. All right, now that was good, but I don't know if it was good as number 19, dry-aged kulat. This is a steak, uh, I believe named after those pants, you know the ones. It comes from uh, near the tri-tip, it's not the most tender piece, but it's really flavorful. And I had the idea to even make it more intense, I was gonna dry age it. I rubbed it with cayenne and black pepper to kind of sanitize the outside, just in case. I put it up on a few uh, bamboo skewers so there'd be air circulation under it. And I just left it in the fridge just like that. And what happens after about four days is it slowly loses some moisture, which intensifies the beef flavor. That's why the fancy steakhouses dry age their steak. So anyway, for the starch, I decided to do a classic potato gratin. So I used my mandolin. I sliced the potatoes really thin. These are Yukon gold potatoes. Some heavy cream, all right, some pepper, a good amount of salt. Don't undersalt your potato gratins. It'll be flat and you'll wonder why it doesn't taste like the restaurants. Some fresh thyme and a real fine grating of that cave age Greer I had from the onion soup. I give that a toss. And now this presentation, I'm doing individual ramekins. You could do this in a big casserole dish like you usually do, but I'm gonna do these in individual ones. So I just piled those up. So once about half of them are in, you wanna pour a little of the milk in there so it doesn't get all over when you try to pour it on the top. I topped it with the rest of the potatoes into the oven for about 45 minutes until they were just tender and brown and beautiful. I used a tarragon reduction, just some fresh tarragon and veal stock to glaze the pan after I cooked the steak. Coulotte is delicious as the pants are beautiful. That was a great course. All right, course 20, kind of the opposite of the filet and the coulotte steak. This is a slow cooked braised beef short rib. Now this recipe is actually uh, from Spain. And what I did is I browned off some boneless short ribs. You can use the ones with the bone, totally works, but I happened to find these at the store and they looked really good. So I browned those nicely. I'm gonna deglaze the pan with some celery and onion, a little pinch of salt, that helps the liquid come out. And then just about a tablespoon of flour. Give that a cook for about 30 seconds, a minute. Then I'm gonna add some sherry wine, a splash of that. All right, that's gonna deglaze the bottom also. To the sherry wine, we're gonna get very exotic here. That was a little bit of cinnamon and unsweetened cocoa powder. That's right, unsweetened cocoa powder. You heard me. All right, we're gonna cook that for a minute. I'm gonna throw in a bay leaf. I'm gonna put my short ribs back in. I'm gonna cover it with some nice rich beef broth. All right, I'm gonna bring it up to a slow simmer. I'm gonna tightly cover it with the lid and some foil. And I'm gonna cook that on low, 250 degrees, for two or three hours until it's fork tender. The sauce is simply a reduction of the juices. You're gonna season it. I have a beautiful, slowly roasted cipollini onion on top. That was a really great piece of meat. All right, on to the cheese courses. All right, course 21. This is called Cels Sacher. This is a famous French goat cheese. It's actually covered in a vegetable ash. That's that black, bluish rind around it. I served this with an amazingly sweet frog hollow peach called Autumn Fire. Okay, course 22 is a manchego and membrillo combination. That membrillo on top is a quince paste it's sweet, it's tangy, it's floral, it's delicious. And then uh, Manchego is a Spanish sheep's milk cheese. What a great combination. 
By the way, running down the middle there, that's some orange honey and almonds. Course 23, cake and ice cream. A flourless chocolate cake that is from AJ Ferrari. It won second place in the New York Fancy Food Show. Uh, not bad, silver medal. And on top, from Byright Creamery in San Francisco, it is a salted caramel ice cream. Unreal. The salt makes the ice cream feel really cold. If you ever get a chance to try those, do it. And then I finish the meal with a single macadamia nut. Uh, you know, you hear that expression, soup to nuts. Uh, apparently, they used to end meals with nuts back in the day. So I thought I would end this 24-item tasting menu with uh, just a simple macadamia nut, almost like a period at the end of this very long run-on sentence. And the other reason I wanted to serve a single macadamia nut, I was wondering, after a six-hour, 24-item tasting menu, could someone just eat one macadamia nut? I think we all know the answer to that. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much. That's the end of the end. I hope you enjoyed that. Check out the blog post for all the details and more information about Food Buzz. And uh, as always, enjoy.